And when corporations act like psychopaths, the results can be devastating. Houston, Texas. In the early 1990s, this was home to a little-known gas company called Enron. Within 10 years, it was the seventh largest corporation in America. Its vast profits credited to charismatic executive Jeff Skilling. From a distance, Jeff Skilling seemed like the perfect CEO for the modern age. You know, hip, brilliant, captivating, brave, edgy, all these things that every executive wanted to be. He had a little bit of that wild man, macho flavor to him, even though he was also clearly an intellectual. People were fascinated by him. Actually, this site is a, is a unique site in the UK. It was a wonderful site for building a power facility. Skilling's strategy was that owning assets like Enron's gas pipelines was old-fashioned. The real money was in trading and finding new things to trade in, from broadband to weather forecasts. Everybody wanted to be like Enron. They were aggressive, they were pioneers, they were changing markets, they were everything you were supposed to be. But Enron's bosses also displayed traits on the psychopathy checklist. They were risk takers, always plunging into new complex markets and massively ambitious. They also seemed less than concerned about workers' welfare. So Enron had a um, ranking system called Rank and Yank, where people who were ranked at the bottom of their group performance-wise were fired. It was a very masculine, hard-charging um, culture. Even with the psychopathic traits in management, Enron was celebrated by the business press. It was named America's most innovative company six years running. At times, the corporate business world is looking for characteristics in its senior staff that actually resemble those found in psychopaths. It's looking for people who are grandiose. They're going to build on a large scale. It's looking for people who are ruthless. They will jettison thousands of jobs. And the problem is that if you just encourage those characteristics without any checks and balances, you can end up in big trouble. But Enron didn't appear to be in big trouble until financial journalist Bethany McLean took a closer look at the figures. Overall, Enron's earnings were behaving very nicely, growing 15 to 20 percent a year, but its cash flow, which is what you actually need at the end of the day, cash was actually, cash flow was negative, and its debt was growing rapidly. And so for a supposedly healthy business, it was very odd that you would have negative cash flow and rising debt. There was something fishy going on at Enron, so Bethany rang Jeff Skilling for an explanation. I don't actually remember whether he started off nice or whether he started off yelling at me, but the tone was quite confrontational. No, we, we have nothing to hide. I was just terrified and thought, wow, I wish I'd never started down this path. <laughs> but Bethany published, and her story questioning Enron's figures was dynamite. Market confidence drained away, and the share price began to plummet from $80 a share to less than one. In public, Enron bosses remained bullish. In private, they desperately offloaded their own shares. They knew the truth. Enron had been hiding staggering losses and artificially inflating profits. Enron has all the hallmarks of a, of a classic corporate psychopathic company. It lied to its financial advisors, it lied to its accountants, it had a culture of bullying and intimidation, and that created this sort of environment where nobody would dare to question authority. Twenty-one Enron executives were found guilty of a catalogue of offences. Insider trading, fraud, conspiracy and money laundering. The company filed for the biggest bankruptcy in US history, with the loss of 21,000 jobs. And CEO Jeff Skilling displayed one more trait on the psychopathic checklist, a failure to take responsibility. While I worked at Enron, I served the shareholders and the board of directors faithfully. When I left Enron on August 14th, I did not believe the company was in financial peril, and I have no knowledge of any, and had no knowledge of any wrongdoing by its employees. The implosion of Enron was America's biggest ever corporate disaster. But frighteningly, the problem of corporate psychopathy could be much bigger. 
threatening not just single companies, but the entire global economy. It's my belief that corporate psychopaths in the corporate banking sector played a significant role in the events leading up to the global financial crisis. So how did psychopathy topple vast banks and send the world into financial meltdown? A lack of conscience is a key psychopathic trait. Experts use a checklist of these traits to diagnose psychopathy. It reads like a serial killer's CV. Yet having some of these characteristics can be a recipe for success. You've got to make hard decisions in business and politics. You have to make tough decisions. And sometimes people are going to get hurt. So if you're a psychopath and you're not concerned about other people's feelings, if you lack empathy for other people and the problems they are in, you don't mind taking those harsh, cold-blooded decisions. These are the corporate psychopaths. They're not violent or necessarily criminal, but their behavior can still have catastrophic consequences. No.